soon as I saw the opening title card in Over the Garden Wall, I thought, hmm, that would make a cool stripy pattern style jumper, which I then found out was called an Icelandic style jumper. As tempting as it is to throw myself into making something as soon as an idea strikes me, I, for once, resisted. So I thought there's no way I have the skill to make something as complicated as that. Well, I resist no more. I decided it was the perfect project for my second annual overly ambitious over the garden wall project that I do for Halloween. Need a snappier title for that. Now I'm not quite that arrogant. So I did pencil in starting this project around midsummer. I finally found the perfect base jumper, pinned down a proper design, and started brainstorming how I would make certain sections. It was a project to while away at, calmly and gradually, and it was time to get to work. So instead of doing that, I moved to Scotland. My early summer start became an early autumn start, which was fine, it's going to be fine, it's fine. Nothing could possibly go wrong. So with the concept out of the way, let's look at the design. I wanted to incorporate more references into the design than just the opening title card, but I was using that as a base, using the skull and some aspects of the patterning as the first row to frame it. These type of jumpers often get lumped into being described as Christmas jumpers, or at least that's what people tell me. So I wanted to make this a jumper for celebrating autumn through over the garden wall. So we have a general row of leaves. Then more references to the title card and nods to each episode. The next row starts to fade away from the title card inspiration, becomes more general imagery with the black turtles and beast branches. Then of course some pumpkins for both Pottsfield and general autumn cosiness with some more leaves scattered in for good measure. Then I thought it would be cool to have a candy trail line, although I was undecided how I was going to make these. Then some patches with some signature imagery for each character. And to round everything off, I wanted to embroider some black train tracks to run along the bottom. And really encapsulate the story into a wearable piece of art. My brain answered every question of how I was going to make these intricate designs with, I don't know, cut out some felt and sew it on there? But I really did want to utilise lots of different textures to make it look less like I stuck a bunch of random stuff on a jumper and more like it was all tied together into one piece of clothing. I've dabbled in embroidery a couple of times, I've taught myself the very basics of how to crochet at the start of the year, so I wanted to incorporate both of those as much as possible. I thought they might help things look like they were knitted into the base of the jumper. Saying that, I couldn't think of any other way to get the shapes and lines from the title card into the first rows of the jumper other than cutting out felt, and I thought it was good to start off easy. two rows of colour to get a bit of space from the top of the jumper because I thought it would look a bit odd having that first row so tight around the neck. I think I went a bit overboard in the end and maybe it would have actually been okay to go straight into that top row but we'll never know. lots of examples of embroidered leaves on Pinterest and having done only a little bit of embroidery in the past with mixed results I wanted to try and learn something new with it. I practiced different techniques before committing to anything using fabric that behaved as close to the jumper that I could find in an attempt to avoid any surprises with how the floss would behave. The practice material ended up being worse to use than the actual jumper, so overall this row was quite common to work on.
focus on this part of the title card with the cool silhouettes of Wirt and Greg. I designed a similar circle for Beatrice and the frog with many names to balance the design. We're going to swiftly move past the fact that the Beatrice design looks like the Twitter logo and talk about the smaller circles I put between them. I did not have enough of the right colour for this entire row, so I used a good felt for the main character circles and painted the smaller ones as close as I could get to match. This way they were separated enough for the two colours and textures to look intentional. Less like the idiot who made it ran out of fabric halfway through, and more like they were making an intelligent design choice. There's an individual one of these bad boys that comes up at the start of every episode, but I either A couldn't work out what's in the pictures or B I could see what was in the pictures and I didn't want to draw that so I came up with my own designs each a reference to one of the 10 episodes I did consider embroidering these images on to keep everything as fibre based as possible but with how small a space to work with there was no way I was going to get any detail on that way so I drew it on with Byron it's fine. This is going to be way too complicated a garment to wash in any sensible way anyway. working on this for the last couple of months on and off in the background and I'm three rows in out of what was going to be nine and I have until Friday to finish it now. I'm gonna have to cut a row out else it'll be too long or at least combine a row so hopefully that will make things a little bit easier for me and then the back is the back. I was going to do the rows as I went but because I want this to actually say over the garden wall like the title card does I need to know how big it's going to be in order to know how big to do the words. So that's end of the week Laurie's problem and it's going to be fine. I think as it is if I'm combining a row I've only got three rows left and I think I've got the most complicated ones out of the way apart from the last one. So it's gonna be fine. I had to bite the bullet and combine the candy trail row and the turtle row. It made the most sense. I made the little black turtles by layering up black felt. They're really damn cute but you can't even really see them against the dark brown of the jumper. And they ended up making the candy trail out of bits of felt too. They were so small I don't know how else I could have done them. But I did use the stitches I did to attach them to the jumper to give them a little bit more detail. The only part of the jumper I ended up using when you found crochet skills in was the pumpkin row. I taught myself the basic stitches in January, but for this design I had to google a whole bunch of new techniques when I found a pattern for a 2D pumpkin, including how to read a crochet pattern. I'm really enjoying crochet so far, I could never get my head around knitting. Something about this works for my brain. It's something I want to do a lot more of, especially in the evenings while watching TV. And with the cold months coming up, it's the perfect time. Not that I have any ideas on watch crochet, so if anyone has any suggestions... I was genuinely looking forward to making the little patches that would run along the bottom of this jumper so much through the entire time I was working on it. Something about it seemed calming, 
just appealing to me and I was looking forward to figuring out all the design. At this point however I was hurtling into my deadline and not making the progress I wanted to each day so it wasn't quite the common task I had in mind. I still did enjoy it but it was without a doubt the most time consuming part of the process. I think it worked out for the best but I spent all day every day sewing and sewing and sewing It was incredibly daunting because I felt like the project was only half finished and my video was due any day. But I could figure out how big I needed the lettering to be on the jumper now I had all the rows on the front finished. And tried to copy the font from the show. Earlier on in the gem pro, I was being a lot more precious with things, picking out and resewing a few things if they weren't in the right place, because I really wanted this to be the absolute best I could make it. At this point I said screw that and called whatever wonky ass sewing I managed good enough. Now officially losing my mind over all the sewing I was doing, I simplified all the squiggly bits around the title on the official card into straight lines and managed to force that down with the machine. After that I had to fill in the gaps and finish the rows around the title. Thankfully I have made enough of everything to have it ready to go. Then it was a matter of finishing off all the little details and sewing together one last patch to finish the design off. this done but I am also glad that I didn't throw it in the fire because that was very tempting towards the end and overall I am really proud of it. The rose could use some tightening in some places especially on the back but other than that I think this is honestly the best I could do it with the skills I have now. I didn't end up doing the black train tracks row on the bottom which is a shame but it's already halfway down my chest as it is and that's much longer than these designs normally are. So oh well I have some black yarn it's fine. I'm glad I have this project out of my system. Going to take a break from hand sewing for at least a couple of days and it's done. It's over. I'm free. Thank you so much for watching this labour of love turn into a creative trainer. I'm really happy I managed to pull it off and I'm really happy it's done with. I'm gonna have to relax with a more low-key, simple video next, but I'm sure my hubris won't stay dormant for long. If you think me absolutely destroying my hands for this jumper worked out, then please like and subscribe. If you don't think me destroying my hands was worth it, I do have Patreon, I forget to mention it. But if you want to fund more of this silliness, then that's on you. Otherwise, I will see you next time.
Now officially losing my mind. Now officially losing my mind. <laughs>